All right. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the Wednesday, October 24th economic development meeting. Uh, we have a quorum. Is there approval to, uh, excuse me, a motion to approve? All right, the sec September 26 minutes. Move approval. It's been properly moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any questions, comments, edits? No. Seeing none. Item number three, Mr. Zalmazak. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Uh, I am Paul Zalmazak, the Economic Development Manager. Uh, we, as, uh, as Alderman Braithway had said, we have three items up for consideration this evening. They're all related to special service areas uh, in Evanston. Uh, Maine Dumpster Mile is going to present first. Uh, they're going to present their uh, annual report, which is required by the ordinance. Uh, they will also be uh, describing their 2019 budget. Uh, this does not come from the general fund, but from their special service area levy. Uh, Downtown Evanston will present afterward, uh, again, their annual report. They will be requesting an additional $55,000 from the general fund, or 50,000, excuse me. And um, that will be their final request um, um, after all of these years. That's, a re that's down from 130,000 last year. 138.5 dropped to 50 and we're getting it, a discount <laughs> um, and then next year because of their of changes to the Washington National TIF it's been dissolved and there's a triennial reassessment coming up they'll be able to essentially be self-supported um, moving forward and then uh, we will talk to you about the Central Street special service area uh, contract that we like to award to Tesca for consulting services to get that SSA launched. Uh, we'll start it this year, it'll launch in 2019. So I'll invite uh, Catherine Gotzik, the Executive Director of Maine Dumpster Mile. Chairman, uh, members of the committee, thank you so much for having us here tonight. I'm the Executive Director of the Maine Dumpster Mile. I'm accompanied by our President, Eric Young, mm -hmm. owner of Lucky Platter and La Principale. And we do have a presentation. I'll um, ask Cindy to Part of which business? So sorry, I'm not in a part of a business. I'm a full-time employee. Of the got of the it. main dumpster mile, Thank the you. executive director. Thank you. You bet. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, I can do it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Um, we just had board of director updates. You can see our, the changes. Um, we added three new board members, uh, and we are now at our maximum of nine. We added uh, members from Firehouse Grill, Auto Barn, and Reprise Coffee Roasters, which is opening soon. We lost members from um, Everyday Cycles and C. Jane Sparkle. The rest, uh, six of them, remain constant. Our 28 year end, 2018 year-end financial forecast is very good. Um, we budgeted to keep uh, six months of operating expenses in the bank, uh, and then we're going to make another 3,500 or so on top of that for a total of 39,083. Um, we have done a lot this year, and we're really proud of it. It's really been a really exciting year for us. We added welcome signs on Dempster Street and Main Street. I, I showed you one, one example there, but we have five of them. Um, our candy cane lights on Main, Street, um, on Main Street last year were one of our most eye-catching uh, initiatives. Um, we are just about to launch November 1st a business logoed um, and sponsored light pole banners. Um, we added uh, another, a, a tiny patch of greenery on Dempster and Sherman um, and, little, and some signage that shows uh, who planted it. And that actually has been surprisingly powerful for people to understand that we're the ones who are planting that. Um, thanks. Um, we also have uh, initiated a program where we are matching funds with merchants. We're actually putting a little money back in their uh, pocket for things like sidewalk planters. We'll match up to $250. Uh, for holiday window decorations, we'll match them up to $100. We have worked all year on a mural that is going in next May on the Purple Soapies wall. It will be by a Detroit-based muralist named Louise Chen. Uh, why didn't we choose an Evanston muralist? We actually had a community input event during our art and dessert walk in May, and Louise Chen was the artist that was chosen from feedback. 
Uh, we ha uh, also had, uh, uh, we involved a lot of neighbors and residents more than we did last year. We had local Boy Scouts help us clean snow during that one big snowstorm. It was so great. Oh my gosh. It was, the merchants were incredibly, incredibly um, grateful. Uh, we also had about 50 people join us for a neighborhood cleanup on Earth Day. And we had the community mural input event that I just mentioned. Um, we launched a, an online business directory. Uh, there's over 250 businesses listed in there. I was really excited to act. Yes. You're good. I was just saying hello. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> 250 businesses listed. Over 220 of them are independently owned. It's a bit of a moving target, but it's a really cool stat, and I, I repeat it often. Uh, we launched a Meet the Merchants blog. We've got about 20 merchants who answer a uh, questionnaire, and we tell, tell the world about them. It's been a very nice touch. Uh, and then we are also engaging the merchants more than we have in the past. We had shop safety and robbery response seminars this year. We had a, a, an event at the beginning of the year where we talked about all the events we were going to do over the course of the year, and they had a very good idea. Um, rather than reacting to things, it was a very proactive step. Um, we helped space uh, um, engage the merchants on the big Evanston block party and then we just had um, quite a few merchants at La Principal to talk about the Maine and Custer development. Uh, we're also connecting them um, which is which is just the uh, our job but it, there have been some really neat connections. My favorite merchant connection, um, the American Toby Jug Museum. Turns out Toby Jugs uh, used to serve uh, the traditional Toby Jug beverage is a a lager called Stingo, which you can't get anywhere in the U.S. Sketchbook is going to be brewing some Stingo for the American Toby Jug Museum. It takes a year to age, so you'll see it next year. Um, we added some new events on the marketing and events side. Um, Sauce Walk is an art and dessert crawl. We had 202 paid guests, and we raised about $1,400 for the Chicago Avenue mural. Uh, we launched a summer concert series. We held four concerts, three on Main Street, one on Dempster. We had over 500 people come through um, both of those locations. All of our talent was hyperlocal, and we had a merchant marketplace there as well. So sketchbook sold, uh, sketchbook sold beer, wine got us sold wine, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Um, our wine walk, we increased about 30% of our attendance over last year. We had 42 participating businesses, and we raised over $10,000 for the Chicago Avenue mural. And we got great feedback on it, too. It was incredible weather. Uh, there's just some pictures from the wine walk. Uh, and we continued these legacy events. These events had been happening before uh, I got here, and they continue. Um, we are launching a CTA Purple Line ad campaign for the holidays. They're going up November 1st. They'll run through December 31st, and we're featuring nine businesses. Those nine businesses did buy into the campaign. We continue to grow our digital communications, our website visits, and social media. And we received our 501c6 nonprofit status uh, with the IRS this year, and we also um, like engaged about um, a couple dozen uh, new merchants who we planted seeds about becoming future committee and board members with. We're very happy about that. Our 2019 budget is uh, a lot the same um, with one big difference. We are adding, uh, we'd like to propose, and we have yet to do this with special events, but we'll be going through that process with the help of Cindy and, and Petra and the other people that we need to do it with. We would like to launch a Main Street uh, Street Festival in October of 2019 um, called Chocktoberfest, celebrating all things chocolate, right in front of the <laughs> Belgian Peron chocolatier. And we have, they have had this planned out in their heads for years and years, and um, it really captures the imagination. So we, we hope that that will become, um, we hope that we'll be approved for that and that it will become a big fundraiser for us so that we can start to actually grow. We've got lots of other ideas that, that aren't, wouldn't be covered by just what we get from our SSA tags. So that is, that is our attempt to raise our own funds. Ta-da. 
Uh, and we have we just signed up our first sponsor should this event happen. It's Binnie's. Thank you very much for all of your support over the course of the past couple of years and for everything you'll do um, going forward. Any questions? Excellent report. Any questions? Seeing none. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very much and for all that you're doing in the business community. Uh, item number B. What's this that? just, uh, I, yeah, oh. so I, uh, I move that we recommend that the council accept the draft budget and recommend that the council adopt the levy to raise the funds uh, in the amount of 2000, I'm sorry, $221,000. Perfect. It's been properly moved and seconded. Seeing no lights for discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, uh, Ms. Item Ms. B, Great downtown stuff. Evanston levy funding request. Good evening, Chair and members of the Economic Development Committee. I'm Annie Coakley, the director of downtown Evanston. I have 50 slides, so... Strap oh, in. You weren't kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what. I'm gonna. Go, I'm gonna. We're, we're gonna. You can time me. <laughs> go. Um, so we have new board members, including our very own Paul Zamozak. The rest of them are in red. We're gonna pass through. Pass through this. Our. Um, our most important slide, obviously, and Paul kind of touched on this. So last year we asked for an additional $138,000 in um, support from the city of Evanston. This year it's $50,000, and that is because our levy with the TIF illumination is $525,000. So the 50 extra helps us provide for the services, mainly the public maintenance contract. Um, we will receive our contribution and from Northwestern and our income, sponsorship income, we're on track this year for uh, $20,000. Um, we've already, ex I leave it at 20, even though it will probably come in at more than 20, but I don't want to get you know too full of myself. And then our expenses are on the other side. That name mainly is the public way and um, admin costs, which includes our um, benefits. A couple of years ago, we went through an exercise. These are the goals, so it's really kind of standard stuff that SSA districts provide. So strengthening the downtown as an organization, placemaking, events, better um, communication, and promotion for our businesses. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing that happened in downtown this year, as you all know, is the Fountain Square. So there's an old photo, and here's today. Um, we were lucky enough to capture this picture when they were testing different colored lights, so it kind of gives you an idea of what it could look like when we program it. So to celebrate it, we had a couple of events. Um, we actually had quite a few. Our first one was an ice carving um, in February. We had some performances with Northwestern. I have a video, if you want to watch it, um, of this Bangra event, but we can save it to the end. Um, we partnered with the Evanston Public Library, and we had four story time events during the day for little kids. We had seven Get Fit Friday events. Um, this was a new initiative. We partnered mainly with downtown Evanston businesses and a few outside of downtown. <clears throat> um, very well received. We had entire bicycles out there with Cycle Bar, so that was really fun. We had a really awesome dance class with Dance Is My Everything. We had our Thursday Night Live concert series move to the fountain this year, although some of it was still kind of under construction, but it worked out. We made it work. Um, so we had 10 concerts. Lots more people than I've ever seen at the other locations. People are thrilled to be out there dancing. Our Sip and Stroll event, formerly Wine Walk. Um, we were able to raise just a tiny little bit of money for the Youth Job Center as a suggested donation. Um, not everybody gave. One of the funnest things I thought we did this year was this sidewalk contest, chalk contest. Um, and it was during the sidewalk sale weekend. We also had two performances at Fountain Square, balloon artist and face painting. This is an example of some of the work that was done with our merchants. They really got into it. Of course, the annual Kids, Cats, and Kids Black Party was located at Fountain Square this year, so it was the first time we closed the streets for this event, and it worked out wonderfully. Um, food trucks, the marching bands, the whole thing, it was a really great night. We also had our first beer port out there. The mayor gave us permission to have Smiley out there. Our fourth annual Evanston Oktoberfest, um, we welcomed 1,330 people, so that's great. Um, it grows and grows every year. You all have a glass from the event in your bag. Um, we had a partnership with Space, so we had six bands. We really think that's reason that we had so much more foot traffic. So the, it's a $15 entry fee, 
and then additional for the beer. But our our kind of our tagline was, when was the last time you saw six bands for $15? It's just not really doable. These numbers I got this morning. So Open House Chicago is it's in its fourth year now as well in Evanston. And here are the list of the sites and the numbers that are um, that were clocked in over the two days. Um, so some of these sites got really great numbers. You can see SAE was kind of number one, but the History Center and um, the Millar Chapel. Yeah, Toby's on it. I know. <laughs> Our 19th annual Big Bite Night um, was this year, and we had over 2,000 students check in. 35 restaurants participated, and this year we created this coupon book, and they're all gone. This is the only one I have left, but they're pretty cute. You want to see it? I want to have it. Oh, <laughs> just, uh, over this month. I know. <laughs> I was just kidding. Happy. I'll pass it around. <laughs> hmm. There's some good stuff in there. It was it was geared for the student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for the rest of this year, we have a couple more events. Um, this Saturday, we have our Halloween trick-or-treat um, stroll from noon to 3. And then from 3 to 5, we have a party at the Holiday Inn. Um, our biggest one, Small Business Saturday, we spent a lot of time promoting that. We're going to repeat our passport program that we did last year. It was quite successful. So for $100, um, you check in with us, and we'll be at One River this year, um, and you'll get a coupon for Collectivo Coffee, a coffee mug, the bag that you all have, and we're working on a couple of other freebies for it. Our warm bevy walk will be December 6th, and the holiday tree lighting at the new permanent holiday tree will be December 8th, and we've also um, hired the same ice carver to come back because it was quite popular, um, so I think it'll be really cool. Our, th these are the places where we advertised this year, and more specifically, what we did with those. Um, new this year was Chicago Magazine, um, their June, July e-newsletter. Um, we're not really sure if we'll do that again next year. We did get a, a fair amount of ROI on that, but maybe not as much as we had hoped for. Um, radio and um, local advertising, including Facebook, seems to be our best buy. Um, this ad on this right here is the ad that we had in the special OHC Open House Chicago Tribune, um, which went to 150,000 locations, so that was great. Similar to Main Dumpster Mile, we have a partnership with um, the Chicago North Shore Convention and Visitor Bureau to co-op the CTA ad buys. So up on top was our summer ad, and the one below is the one that will be installed, I believe, next week. So that's six weeks in 144 um, train cars. Our social media, um, some bragging rights here. So fun fact, Wicker Park in Bucktown has 202 Instagram followers. We have 5,209. Lincoln Park has 1,800 and Oak Park has 1,966. Um, in our Facebook as well, Lincoln Park has 2,400 Facebook followers and Oak Park squeaks by us, I think by 63, they have 6,300, but I think that's good company to be in. Nice. Our street pole banners will be um, <laughs> installed with our holiday decor, so right around th Thanksgiving. Um, our maintenance plan continues the same with the garbage removal, but this year we did additional cleaning for the tables and chairs that are at Fountain Square. And next year, there will be 10 additional planners at Fountain Square, so we'll be um, servicing those as well. In terms of placemaking, we have our chalkboard that's at Other Brother. We created these um, sidewalk stickers at the bottom for the businesses that we thought might be impacted by Albion construction, um, people not realizing where to go, but they're just kind of fun and cute. The, um, we had an artist install in a vacant storefront, and then Beacon Academy, we introduced them to Collectivo, and they put in this really cool art installation until they boarded it up. <laughs> but they're, almost, they're opening soon. Our biggest placemaking was the Church Street mural, so um, the Metro Viaduct. We worked with Evanston um, Mural Art Program to get two murals on Church Street and Maple, essentially, so the Metro Viaduct. We raised the funds in 
three days. It was kind of amazing. Evanston Rocks gave us 5,000, Church Street Plaza, 5,000, excuse me, the owners of 1007 Church, 5,000, Downtown Evanston put in 5,000, the Evanston Arts Council committed 5,000, and Corn Rind, which is Dan Couch's hospitality, um, put in 1,000. And we were able to get Jeff Zimmerman, a Chicago artist, to do this mural. Um, and he has a little selfie station right here. And these are all Evanston residents, a real Evanston residents that came out and had their picture taken. And then this is the south wall. Sorry, the north wall. And this is Anthony Lowell and a Chicago muralist as well. This is where I really get nerdy. This is like the stuff I love doing, the um, workshops and things like that for retail retention and traction. So we had, um, again, we repeated our Fab Food Chicago Instagram tours with Instagrammers. Um, we pay them, they're influencers. They go to restaurants and they take really nice pictures and then we get um, incredible ROI on that because their, their reach is about 300,000 collectively. Um, Paul and I continue to fight the good fight and go to all the ICSC events, although I don't have to explain to you that the re face of retail is definitely changing. Those ICSC events are definitely different than they used to be. They're a lot more networking than actual face-to-face -face with retailers, but it's still a good networking opportunity. Um, the Instagram workshop, that's a picture of it on the right. We had the same person we hire come back and teach a class to our businesses so that they can better learn how to use Instagram. The um, Windows Matter consultant, Amy Meadows, is an expert um, merchandiser and window dresser. She gave a speech a couple of years ago, or a workshop a couple of years ago, to our businesses. I hired her this year to do in-store uh, in audits with her businesses. We asked how many businesses would be interested. There was about 18, but we had budgeted for six, so we had a lottery, and we were able to provide the service to Isla's, Becky and Me, Spice and Tea, Vinick, Alley Gallery, and Comics Revolution. So she went and sat with them, and then gave them a report of suggestions on how to change their merchandising to increase their sales. Um, we're having a holiday window decorating workshop November 8th at Blick for our holiday window decorating contest and a Yelp education seminar. And then we continue to have this great relationship with a middle professor who assigns her students, 10 of our businesses each quarter, to provide a, a marketing plan. Always some closures. Oh, Andy, quick question. Yes. Are those workshops strictly for your downtown businesses, or is there a fee? I can't. No. They're, um, well, the Instagram class did have a fee. Okay. Um, the Windows Manor was free, but it was through that lottery system that I mentioned. Um, but strictly, yes. I'm, so you don't offer them citywide? No, I mean, we've paid. partnered um, with Main Dempster Mile and some folks in other districts. Um, if they're paid, I don't care who comes. Right. But if they're free, I typically you know, would keep it to our, sure. our downtown district because that's where the money comes from. This one in particular, I mean, I'm happy to share with the other districts who I'm working with at Medill. It's, she's, a, um, she's been awesome. Candy Lee, Professor Candy Lee. Got it. So some of these um, closures, I'm not exactly, uh, you know, it happens, right? Yeah. Especially in the restaurant um, sector. But we had a lot open. Um, 10 Q Chicken, um, Falcon Eddie's, Midnight Pig Tap Room, Kinship, Jilly's. Um, <coughs> My favorite, I wouldn't say favorite, but the one I'm excited about is sort of under Be Entertained or Experiential Retail, which is the One River Art School. So we're very excited to have that kind of um, merchant on Davis Street. And then coming soon, Collectivo, Kilwins, Dekalash, and Assembly Creators. Assembly Creators I'm specifically excited about because it is real retail. It's a women's accessory mixed high-end and very affordable pieces that um, and she's doing just an incredible job building out the store she has like handmade wallpaper on the walls it's going to be really sharp and it's 1642 Orrington right that's been vacant for a very long time it was an eyeglass place Craig something yes. and then I think way way ago it was Ben and Jerry's if I'm not no, mistaken ben and Jerry's was, was next door south. okay yeah no no that yeah yeah so she and she just had her signs put up today, and they're, it's, it's just gorgeous. Of course, we do a lot of great things, but we always have some challenges. So our number one challenge, of course, is panhandling, parking. 
we um, we are creating a parking subcommittee, um, which I'll go to in the next slide. And then, of course, retail attraction. Again, that's uh, you know we have higher rents, we have online shopping, we have the mall we have to deal with. But of course, branding collateral is something we have a little bit of, but we could do we could do way better in that area. Um, retail retention efforts. So we have great workshops. I'd love to see us do more happening. So more beverage walks, more wine walks. Um, and then generally just better engagement with our new students. Andy, what is your strategy for panhandling? You're working with the police department? I've owners. been speaking with the police department. Um, I'm now working with Sarah Flax, and next week we're going to um, a very big workshop in Chicago with the Chicago Coalition for the Homeless, and they're going to have a two-hour best practices seminar to share what other communities have been doing. Sure. So I don't know yet. Good stuff. Thank you. Um, I mean, I like the meters. They're not, they're not doing anything, right? I mean, they're, we're putting money in. We're helping fund, you know, connections for the homeless by a little tiny bit. But it, does, it just kind of gets the conversation going, which is why we did them originally. So at the top of this, I talked about how we're going to be reconstituting next year um, to, you know, in 2020, live for the district, will live on for another 10 years or so, depending on what the council deems appropriate. Um, so far, we have formed an advisory committee. We've hired place consulting. We've had a few meetings. We're going to be hosting more visioning meetings um, above the one required public meeting by the state of Illinois state statute for creating an SSA. And then some of the things that we're talking, talking about now, enhanced um, landscaping in our raised beds, new holiday decor, our holiday decorations are 20 years old. We, we need new ones. A possible bar, bar, parking validation or valet program, snow removal, and a street team ambassador, which would be directly to the panhandling situation. And I just left it with this picture because I think it's beautiful, and it was actually taken by one of the engineers on the project. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. And I didn't go as fast as I promised. I'm sorry. It was a great report. Thank you. Questions? Oh, do you want to see the video? It's kind of fun. Oh. <laughs> uh. <coughs> Meanwhile, she's teeing up the video. Uh, <laughs> really just celebrating spring for us, celebrating Bhangra, because uh, as you know, they're opening up the new fountain place, so we got brought out to do this little Bhangra segment. It was a long winter, a lot of us really hated that quarter, and just to have some fresh sun, be out in the open, dance, do what we enjoy is really just uplifting. Uh, this is Northwestern Bhangra. We are an organization affiliated with Northwestern, we're a dance team. So Bhangra is a traditional folk dance from northern India, actually Punjab, and it really just started with a whole bunch of guys in Punjab trying to see who could hold up their leg the highest. And really, Bhangra is like the representation of Punjabi culture. I feel like Edmonton is pretty good about being multicultural, but sometimes, you know, you can get pa like patches here and there where you think maybe not so much. I really just want to show everyone the excitement and the love of Bhangra itself, how much fun it is to actually dance it, and that was kind of what we did with the teaching session. Professor Kinra, you gotta come up! Professor Kinra! I, I'm really surprised at the turnout. We had a lot of people show up, which was really awesome. Um, people were pretty hyped, and we saw a lot of kids, um, which was really fun teaching them. Uh, dance for us. Can you dance? Dance. How many guys dance? Yay! I think it was pretty cool. Yeah, and I wanted my daughter to see some of the performances, so I think she enjoyed it. Want to make the motion? Yeah, I move that we recommend to the City Council approval of the Special Service Area Number Four 2019 Tax Levy Request of five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars for downtown operations and maintenance, and approval of fifty thousand dollars from the Economic Development Division for additional maintenance contract reimbursements. It's been properly moved and seconded. Seeing no lights, questions or comments. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Item C. Thank you. Mr. Chair, before we go to item C, I, I, I just want to clarify something. I, I believe you, both Catherine and Annie have a staff of hundreds to accomplish everything that you're doing, correct? No, it's, it's really them, and um, 
maybe one additional staff. So how that happens, they work really hard. And then secondly, there's the partnerships of the business community that really make it happen. So um, they're really kind of thrifty with the public funds, and I think I think they're just doing a very good job. So I wanted to point that out. Well said. Um, yeah. Thank you. All. Um, yeah, and it also puts um, uh, our Central Street friends in, in a bind because they have a lot of lot of work to do with uh, with a small group. But um, we're asking the committee's recommendation to the city council to uh, approve uh, funding of twenty four thousand and thirty five dollars to Tesca. Uh, Evanston-based consulting firm to help the uh, Central Street Business Association, am I saying that right? Yes. Um, implement their special service area. The packet outlines uh, the, the RFP process we went through. There were, uh, we sent it to three companies, two responded, and uh, again, Tesca being a, a local business, um, we're, we're pleased that we're able to move forward with them. Their proposal shows a designation date of October of 2019. Uh, by the way, that's in the addendum to the packet if you're not seeing that in your um, the original packet link. All I'm asking for this evening is a recommendation to the City Council to pr proceed. Um, and I believe our experience in the past with Maine Dumpster Mile is is once the the uh, SSA has established that that funding is kind of reimbursed over a period of time. Um, but I, I really think we're getting a bargain. Uh, Tesca came in very competitively. I think they're trying to grow their market share in that line of business. And again, if you scroll down to the kind of back of the packet, you'll see that um, October 2019 is the anticipated designation process date. They'll start collecting in 2020. They may, you know, request to borrow money from us to get a few things started, like we did with Maine Dempster Mile. But this will be implemented in 2020. Um, yes, the uh, Central Street Group is here if you have any questions. But we didn't anticipate that they would have a presentation. I don't think I don't think I have questions. Um, yeah, you know, back before the Main Street, uh, the Main Dempster Mile was uh, fully implemented, I kind of, I'll, I'll be honest, I was skeptical, but uh, my skepticism has faded far, far, far as a distant memory. So uh, really, really pleased with how well that's worked and, uh, you know, in that community. So grateful for that and optimistic for how it can work on Central Street. So if there, I don't see any lights from anybody else, but I would move that we uh, recommend that the City Council approve the lowest and most responsive bid for the RFP 1851, it's 18-51. It's been properly moved. Is there a second? Second. Seeing no lights for discussion or comments. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, item number four, there are no items for discussion. Any comments from the dais? Seeing none. Uh, communications, item A. Uh, Mr. Chair, we, uh, the Economic development staff would like, um, I'm not sure if we need an actual recommendation, but we need to change the date of the next Economic Development Committee meeting. We want to do that on December 5th. I believe that would be joint with the Parking and Transportation Committee. I'm not sure, if Alderman Wynn, if you had that conversation this evening. Okay, that my understanding is that was supposed to happen. We wanted to bring forth, um, and we can, we can have further discussion with that, but we wanted to bring forth the conversation about uh, dockless bikes and, and scooters, because that's that's kind of bubbling up. No, that that would be a. a we should um, get in touch with um, Jill and Marcos tomorrow and let the committee know because uh, yes, we do need to discuss. Okay. That that was intended to happen this evening. I'm sorry, I didn't. No, we were we went right down to the wire, okay. so that didn't happen. But because we approved the next meeting, uh, we told people the next meeting is going to be uh, December. Uh, November 28th. Okay. But um, so if we get the committee noticed on this as soon as possible. Right. If we well, if 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 it's decided that November 28th is the date, we could potentially do a joint meeting on that date. There's nothing preventing us from having a joint meeting on November 28th. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's that's all I have. Okay. All right. What, uh, uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. What was um, our re regular scheduled meeting? I was just looking this? it up right now. Um, was it December, uh, November 28th? Correct. Uh, the, is, that is correct, November 28th. So 6 p.m. transportation, 7.30. So it, since parking, the transportation and parking is, you know, we just discussed meeting on November 28th. Should Can we do this combined meeting on uh, 
the 28th. What, what were you thinking of, Paul? Uh, a period of time during the two meetings that we would talk about dockless bikes, or what did you? Sure. There, there seemed to be a couple of items bubbling. Um, one particular was the was the the, the dockless bikes and, and scooters. That's becoming an issue. They're 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 coming in and asking how to proceed. Mm -hmm. um, we could add a couple of other items as well that we've been discussing, parking issues, uh, parking lots, those kinds of issues, but primarily it's dockless. So if we wanted to spend a short period of time discussing that primary I think issue. the larger question is where would we host it if we're going to do a joint? Well, I mean, we could do the first hour of our meeting and then do a 7 to eight, seven to 7.30 overlap with this meeting and... Um, on talk about uh, dockless bikes, and then the, member, the rest of the member of transportation and and parking could leave, and those and and then we could continue the rest of the economic development committee meeting. Yeah. Would we have other agenda items? Or would that be it? Yeah. Those are the items that again there was kind of a general parking lot parking discussion, but our real our, what we wanted to do is make it worth the time. But if if we want to expedite the time, we really got to focus on the dockless transportation. Okay, so maybe um, opposite of what you just said. If that's the only economic development item, just have that at the front end of your meeting, and then. Oh, at six. Do you think we can get economic development members? With a month notice. I don't see why not. Okay, we could do it at the front end. You guys good? So there's nothing else on EDC for next month? We're not anticipating any okay, other items. Then let's do that. Then let's have it at the beginning of uh, transportation and parking. Okay. Yeah. And, and then, Paul, if you could get as much materials to us in advance so that all of us, so that we can really, uh, I mean, and park at, at transportation and parking, we've been talking about these things, but I think if you could get all the, as many much material out to us, um, so that we are all completely up to speed on what's going on, because I know a lot is happening. Yes, we'll do that. Yeah, and we got to get ahead of them. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right. Seeing Seeing no other items. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Yeah. All right. It's been properly moved. And motion. Excuse me. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. The meeting is adjourned. Have a wonderful evening. Congratulations. Thank you all.